Welcome back to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. I now have a very special guest, Barry Bricky. He is the Public Education and Information Officer with the Kingsport Fire Department. I got it right, I think. Barry, it's so good to see you again. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and it's good to be here. Well, tell me, this is a special week. What's going on? Well, we have National Child Passenger Safety Week coming up. It's September 19th through the 25th. And we always encourage people to have their child passenger seats checked. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a child passenger seat technician since about 2006. I'm up to about 5,000 seats that I've checked. That's a lot of wow. seats. And a majority of those seats are not installed properly. And so, you know, our big push is to make sure that they are all year round, but this is our extra push during the year to kind of have some, you know, maybe a, a special event somewhere where people could come by somewhere else instead of having to come to the fire station. Mm -hmm. Well, how many seats of those 5,000 are actually put in correctly? I mean, do you have to fix a lot of them? So how many people say, you know, I think I have it in right. I just want you to check it. And you're like, no, this is totally wrong. <laughs> you know, I have uh, that. That's normally the, the statement I hear on the wow. phone or somewhere. You know, I, I've put it in and I'm not sure if it's in right or I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. It's usually one or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times it is the I have no idea what I'm doing. I had one uh, gentleman yesterday come in. He and his wife are expecting a baby and he was I have no idea how to put these car seats in. And somebody said, you're the person I should talk to. And so uh, they, he came in and I said, well, it's gonna almost be like a class. It's gonna take about 20 minutes or so. We'll show you how to install these seats hmm. and make sure they're in right. That way, if he were to take one out and have to put it in a different vehicle, he could do that. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday I worked with them. And they were, both of the seats were infant carriers, mm -hmm. which is a lot of the seats that people have when you have a newborn. And uh, there's a certain way those seats have to go in. There's a certain amount of tightness. The buckles have to be in the right position and things like that. And a lot of times people just don't get them installed correctly. And what happens is that the seat uh, is too loose inside the car. Uh, the belt positions are in the wrong place or they're too loose. If the belts are too loose and you have an accident, there is a possibility of that child coming out of that seat. So we don't want that to happen. So we wanna make sure that the seats are installed correctly from the beginning. That way, if they are involved in an accident, then that child will be safe and the seat will do its job. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you, I had an incident with a car seat. Um, I'm not proud. This is probably the scariest day of my life when my I was putting my kids in the car and I ran inside to get another kid. <laughs> and one kid, you know, he was old enough to put himself in a seat. He was six years old. But he was reaching for something in the front seat and, he, and tripped and hit the reverse, okay? It was cool. And the car went off on its own. And when I came out, the car was gone. It rolled down a hill, down into a neighbor's house. And the door was open and the baby seat that my baby that I was carrying would have been in was had fallen out of the car. And what had happened is the toddler seat, which another son was in, when he would get out, he accidentally hit the baby seat, you know, hook. And so all the time I'd been putting Reese in, it wasn't in, it wasn't locked in the last probably couple of times I'm putting him in because Max was accidentally undoing his when he undid his. So that is something concerning. Do you tell people maybe to separate them between seats or what do you do in that case? Well, a lot of the newer vehicles, well, actually all the new vehicles have latch system inside them. And so you don't use the lap shoulder belt. It's a lot okay. more difficult now to unhook them. Yeah, this was a while back. Yeah. And, you know, the car seats have changed a lot. I see a lot of people nowadays, and it's probably about half where we have grandparents coming in who are watching children or who have, mm -hmm. uh, have custody of a grandchild. And they come in and are like, I have no idea how this seat goes in. Um, I had a great grandmother who was in her 90s come in one morning and she was babysitting a great grandchild. Mm -hmm. And she said, honey, I have no idea how this seat goes in. And I'm glad she came by because it was an infant carrier, mm -hmm. uh, infant only seat, an infant carrier. And the actual base was just sitting in the seat and the seat was facing the wrong direction. Mm. Um, it wasn't strapped in <laughs> and the child wasn't buckled inside mm. it. And so I was able to show her and help her get that seat installed properly and make sure that the belts uh, on the harness was in the right place for that child. And she was very grateful. Of course, I was, 
very happy she came by because if she would have had an accident, that child would have been injured pretty badly. Oh, absolutely. And this is something I don't know if a lot of people recognize that you are the go-to people to learn this stuff. When I had babies, I don't know I would have thought of going to the fire department to learn how to put in the seats. You know, I just asked friends and, and neighbors how to do it. So that's pretty cool. How long have you guys been offering this service? Uh, since around 2006, when okay. I was first when I was first trained. Um, the interesting thing is when I received my initial training, it was a, a week long hmm. uh, car seat training. You would wow. think, well, why does it take so yeah. long? Because there's so many different seats. I was going to say, yeah. So many different car configurations, and you have to fit the child who who come in all different sizes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have to fit the child to the seat and the seat to the car. And mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that everything's in there properly. And when I was certified, by the end of the week, I went home and fixed mine. <laughs> because oh, wow. my children were small then. And uh, I walk into my home and I'm like, uh, honey, I'm going out to fix the car seats because they were in my wife's car. And she's like, what do you mean? So, well, they're not installed properly. <laughs> wow. And so that kind of uh, that kind of really got me it, it really hit me at home really well because it was my own kids and know that a lot of people probably didn't know how to do it and they probably still don't know and, like and that's said. true that's true I mean tell me a little bit about this okay the cars are changing all the time seats are changing all the time do you have to go and <laughs> take a new class every so often well we have uh, trainings all year round when there's new seats from different companies come out, they mm -hmm. actually have some online training, which is great. We get to see the seats, get to see videos of the installations of them. There are refresher courses that the uh, state of Tennessee uh, does. The uh, Safe Kids, uh, safekids.org is actually a great place to go to. You could look up on safekids.org and find out uh, about where car seat technicians are in your area. You can uh, sometimes even look up different car seats It'll even give you maybe some suggestions of what seat is best for your child. If you oh. have an infant that's under uh, two years of age, they probably need to be in an infant carrier or a rear-facing seat. Even though Tennessee state law says a child can go forward-facing at a year and 20 pounds, it's best, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, that a child would be rear-facing up until about the age of two. Hmm. Now, some of the new seats will go rear-facing up to 65 pounds, and so, a child could be almost four years old or even older yeah. and still fit in a rear-facing seat. What? And so it just depends on the size of the child and the seat that you have and, and the vehicle that it's in. So. My kids were probably like in fifth grade by the time because they were small <laughs> people, you know? I can't imagine them. Well, is it okay for them, though, at that age to be facing front, though? After about the age two is the best time for them to go forward. Okay. That way they have good head control, good neck, muscles, and things like that. Because when they're, when they're tiny, when they're babies and toddlers, their heads are pretty large proportionally to their bodies. And so we want to make sure that the car seat kind of cups them as they're sitting there and helps protect them. Now the seat I have with me, this is a booster seat, and this is on the other end of when people mm -hmm. make a lot of mistakes. They'll take mm -hmm. a child to a booster seat too soon. A child has to be at least four years old to go to a booster. I prefer these high back boosters. Mm -hmm. The shoulder belt comes through this top portion. It makes it come right across the collarbone and then it aligns the lap belt across the hip bones where it's supposed to be. And that way the kid's not moving around and taking the belt and putting it under, you know, under their, under their side or something like that, the shoulder belt. Because I see a lot of kids going, well, that belt bothers me, it touches my neck. And so with this seat, it actually keeps it off their neck, puts it across the collarbone where it's supposed to be, and that way it does its job. Okay, so do you have any numbers you can give us, like how many lives these seats save a year, anything like that? Well, we know that car crashes are one of the leading causes of injuries for children and for death, and that's, that's a terrible thing. Uh, two children every single day are killed here mm -hmm. in the United States because they are not restrained properly in a car seat. And about 374 children a day are injured uh, in car accidents. So we wanna make sure that the kids are in those seats and they're in the right seat and they're buckled properly. And so, you know, when you could go to safekids.org or you can call us at the fire station to make an appointment. Uh, if you go to Safe Kids and you live in any part of the country, you can actually look up a car seat technician in your area. 
Matter of fact, we probably have about 15 to 20 in this area. We work really closely with the Nicewanger Children's Hospital uh, over in Johnson City, and they have uh, nurses that are trained oh, okay. for car seats, and they actually have them here in Kingsport at Indian Path, and then there at the Children's Hospital. Uh, Johnson City Fire Department has people that are trained, Bristol Fire, Sullivan County Sheriff's Department, also Kingsport Police Department, and us at the Kingsport Fire Department. And okay. so lots of different options. Sometimes you might not be able to get in touch with one of those people. Um, because it may be a shift that they're on or something. Mm -hmm. I work Monday through Friday, which is a lot more convenient for a lot of people to come by. And if anyone ever needs to contact us, they can do that, call the Kingsport Fire Department. I didn't realize there were so many technicians. So, so you, not just you, but the, the fire department, the police department, the hospitals, all these places. But if they go to savekids.org, you can get that information? Yeah, you can look at, up there by zip code and find out the ones that are closest. It'll give you their contact name, their agency, and their telephone numbers. Okay, very good. I like that. Any other pearls of wisdom that you'd like to give us before we go? Well, anytime you're using a car seat, um, try to use you know caution. Make sure that they're in in that seat properly. Belts should always be snug. The chest buckle, a lot of times people put it down too low. They'll maybe put it down on the stomach or the kid will push it down. Mm -hmm. That'll tell you two things. One, that these straps are too loose. If they can push it down, it's too loose. When you have that buckle, it needs to go center of the chest, pointing that right here even with the armpits and that way they're good and safe. Very good advice. Thank you so much, Barry. That life-saving advice. I appreciate you. And we'll have you back next month to talk about fire safety. Thank you for being here today. And thank you for joining us. This is A Closer Look.